We'll have five individuals speaking, beginning with Judge Homer Drake, who is chair of the Board of Trustees. He will be followed by Diane Owens, who is the incoming chair of the Board of Trustees. And then we'll hear from President Bill Underwood, who will introduce Grant Taff, who is executive director of the American Football Coaches Association. And then uh, we will hear from Jim Cole, who is director of athletics. When uh, Jim Cole completes his remarks, he will open the floor for questions from the media. Uh, if you have a question, please raise your hand and identify yourself and indicate to whom you wish to direct your question. And uh, following the news conference, all of the uh, speakers will be available for one-on-one -on -one interviews. Judge Drake. Thank you, Larry. Good afternoon. This is truly a great day for Mercer, a day for which I've long awaited. And we appreciate all of you being here with us for this historic news conference. I'm very pleased to announce today that after almost a 70-year absence, the sights and sounds of college football will be returning to the Mercer campus. Yeah. Mercer University Board of Trustees this morning voted unanimously to reinstitute competition in intercollegiate football beginning in the fall of 2013. Now I want you to know that this was a well thought out, carefully deliberated decision by the board that followed more than two years of study and discussion and I also want you to know that the board's action today reflects the trustees' support for President Underwood's ongoing efforts to further strengthen the university's academic profile, reputation, and appeal to prospective students in the Southeast and indeed nationwide. For many years, I, along with many other Mercer alumni, have urged and vigorously supported the resumption of intercollegiate football here at my alma mater. And I could not be happier or more pleased than this has actually occurred during my tenure as chairman of the Board of Trustees. Now this is just the starting whistle. This vote this morning and this enthusiastic embracing of the resumption of football by the university's trustees. Because over the next three years, we'll need to complete our fundraising. We have to build a stadium, hire coaches, and recruit student athletes. But today's decision by the board puts in motion our return to Mercer's gridiron glory days. At this time, I would like to call on Diane Owens, who is chair of our board's executive committee and the incoming chair of the Board of Trustees, to offer her observations on today's historic decision. Diane. Thank you, Judge. The, four, uh, the full board's action today follows a unanimous vote last month by the trustees executive committee to reinstitute intercollegiate football at the university. I believe that both boards recognize that the kind of football that Mercer intends to play will enhance the university's ability to attract even more high ability students to this institution and strengthen the university financially while raising its profile. As a former Mercer student athlete, I know the benefits of competing in intercollegiate athletics at a university like this. It is a learning experience that prepares you for a future life of leadership, teamwork, and success. It is a place where you play the sport you love because you love it, not because you have any expectation of making a living at it. 
There are many outstanding young men around the state and the southeast who want a rigorous liberal arts-based education, but who also want to continue to compete in the sport they love, football. We expect that former Mercer student athletes, like many former Mercer student athletes, the future generation of Mercer football players will go on to become leaders in their communities and their professions. Needless to say, I'm very excited about the return of football to my alma mater. Before we hear from President Underwood, I would like to thank, on behalf of the university, all the members of the Mercer Athletics Foundation's Board of Directors and the members of our football task for force who have served over the last two years to provide input and guidance as the university has evaluated the reinstatement of intercollegiate football. With those who serve on the foundation board or who served on the task force, please stand or raise your hand if you already are standing to be acknowledged. And we thank you. At this time, it is my privilege to introduce to you the president of Mercer University, William D. Underwood. Well, I'd say this is a great way to kick off homecoming weekend. What do you all think? How's that look? You've heard these folks talk about resuming football, and that's what we're doing. We're not starting college football here. Uh, we're picking up where we left off. We suspended college football following the 1941 season for the war, and I guess we forgot that the war was over. <laughs> but, uh, but now we're resuming college football. It's uh, very appropriate that we're resuming college football here at this place because, in a very real sense, college football in Georgia was born at Mercer University. Mercer University competed in the very first college football game played in the state of Georgia. That same year later, we played in the first game that Georgia Tech ever played in. We beat them 12 to 6. <laughs> we played the University of Florida five times early on and shut them out the first five times we played them. So there is, you know, a great tradition of college football <laughs> here at Mercer. What we're talking about doing here is competing in Division I non-scholarship football. There are three Division I non-scholarship leagues in the country, the Ivy League, the Patriot League, and the Pioneer League. Uh, we have applied for membership in the Pioneer Football League, which includes a number of truly outstanding uh, universities. It's a group that uh, uh, we would be very privileged uh, to join in competing in intercollegiate football. I'm very grateful to the Board of Trustees uh, for their support and endorsement of this decision. I'd like the members of the Board of Trustees who are here to stand, or if you're already standing, raise your hand. Let's thank these folks. <laughs> Judge Drake and Diane Owens have already told you why we believe it's important uh, for us to take this step and why be we believe it's going to be beneficial to the university to take this step. Uh, I also believe this is going to be a tremendous benefit to our community. Um, communities succeed because they become vibrant places that are attractive to creative and talented young people. Uh, the College Hill Corridor Project is all about uh, making Macon a place that's even more attractive to talented, energetic, creative young people, and we believe the institution of intercollegiate football at Mercer is just another step towards making Macon the most attractive place to live in the Southeast. 
Uh, we're excited about this endeavor. We're going to need a lot of support from the community, and we're going to uh, have to do a lot of work to get ready for the uh, kickoff in the fall of 2013. Thank you all. I almost forgot the most important part of the news conference. I have a good friend who knows a great deal about college football. He was uh, named the National College Football Coach of the Year following Baylor University's Miracle on the Brazos season. He's a member of the College Football Hall of Fame. And most recently, for the last number of years, he served as the executive director of the American College Football Coaches Association. I'm, of course, uh, speaking about Coach Grant Taff. Coach Taff has traveled here to be with us today. He spoke with the Board of Trustees this morning about the benefits of competition in intercollegiate football, and I'd like to invite Coach Taft to make a few remarks now. Thank you, President Underwood. It's really a privilege to be here today. This is an exciting historical moment in the history of a great university. And to just be a part of this is uh, very meaningful to me uh, because of many reasons. Number one, I am the executive director of the American Football Coaches Association, 12,000 members nationwide. And it just occurred to me, President Underwood, that one of our members will eventually become the head football coach at Mercer University. So I'm excited about that for the coaches that get the opportunity to be here and serve <clears throat> this university and to be able to coach this team. My background uh, in, co in uh, football is very extensive. As a small boy in West Texas, I dreamed the dream, and that was to play the game. And because of my coaches in high school and what they taught me, my family had taught me a great uh, lesson about a value system, but my coaches taught me how to be a leader, uh, how to win on and off the football field, the importance of my education, and it's given me a wonderful life and, for me, involved in football. So for this occasion, I want to say that never more will Mercer be the same in terms of student spirit, community involvement, alumni jumping on board and being involved in more than they have before. Having an on-campus stadium will change the dynamics of this campus in so many ways. It is something that this university has made an outstanding decision in. This non-scholarship concept not only will attract great young athletes that want to play in this type of environment, but it will add many students to your student body. The community will benefit financially because of the fact that folks will be coming here to attend games and the revenue that's brought in will be significant over a period of time. Nationwide, we at the association have voluntarily helped many universities who made this decision and moved forward, some of them as much as a decade ago. And the results that they have received, they thought they could, but they have. That's why I wanted to come and say to the Board of Trustees today, the plan that President Underwood and his committees have put together is the right plan for this university, and it will succeed. We have many examples. I have quotes from one of the presidents of those universities that started football about a decade ago. They ended up playing a Division III championship four years ago. They're undefeated this year and will probably play again. The community itself, after a five-year period of football, had realized over a million dollars in income stemming from people attending the games and being a part of the community. The student body involvement and the spirit that had been built was significant, and it was proven, not something that is projected or imagined. It will happen. The community being involved is extremely important, and the alumni's embracing of something that brings recognition through the media, local, regional recognition. I know the president of this particular university who played in the, state cha uh, the national championship 
told me that their experts figured that they received over a million dollars of free publicity for the entire university during that national championship game. Since that time, they've appeared on television many, many times. You just can't get that kind of publicity. And it's very, very important that all support, all get behind, all work diligently to that uh, great day when there will be a stadium on this campus and a football team wearing these great helmets. Congratulations, Mr. President. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Coach Taft, for being here today. Uh, Coach Taft's been a great resource to me as we've been examining uh, this possibility, and, uh, and I know he's going to be a great resource to me going forward, and I'm grateful uh, to you for everything, Coach. Uh, the final speaker at our uh, news conference this morning will be our Director of Athletics, Jim Cole. Thank you, Dr. Underwood and Coach Taft. Thanks for your words. And I've, I remember as a young man growing up in the 80s, uh, knowing your name quite well and following those Baylor teams. And I remember when you came to, to Tech one time, I was at the game, and, and y'all went away for victory. So uh, I know you remember that game well. Uh, I want to say on behalf of the athletic staff, the athletic department, to Diane Owens, the incoming president of the trustees, the uh, outgoing president of the foundation board, and to Dr. Drake, and to the board of trustees. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we won't let you down. We're going to put our best foot forward and make this happen and make Mercer proud. And also on behalf of that staff, I want to thank you, Dr. Underwood, for your vision and dedication to athletics. And I'll tell you, when we said, when Dr. Drake announced that we were starting it, I got a little cold chill. And I think President Underwood did too. And it's exciting. But we have, right now, we have 15 wonderful sports that are part of Mercy University. And they turn out tremendous young men and women. And that will not change with football. A lot of times in my prior life in public service, people, education was always a big topic. And you talked about how to measure and scores and SAT and uh, graduation rates. I always said it was pretty simple. You judge your education system and an institution by the type of individual it puts into society. Do they give back or do they take away? To me, athletics and football generates young men and women that learn to persevere, to fight, to know what it's like to come home late at night and study and do things when it's uncomfortable. And that's the type of individuals that we have been turning out for years at Mercer and will continue to turn out, and football will help us along those lines. So where do we go? There's a lot of work to do. Judge, Judge Drake said this is the uh, opening kickoff, and he's right. Uh, kind of to let you know, right now we will immediately begin uh, work on forming a Blue Ribbon Committee to find us a coach. And I'm going to take the words of this great coach here to my left. He said the main thing you got to do is you got to find a leader. And that's so true, because you see every great organization, from business to schools to nonprofits, they succeed based on leadership. And we've got great leaders here with the Board of Trustees and Dr. Underwood, and we'll be looking to fill a position in football with the same type of leadership values that we hold dear at Mercer. So we'll get started on that. We have a lot of uh, plans to do on the stadium. We, we have multiple options there that we're looking at. So on behalf of the Board of Trustees, the Mercer community, and I want to thank everybody that showed up. I see a lot of people here, but we're going to see at the games, right? We're going to see tonight. <laughs> and we're going to see tomorrow. Remember, let's not forget when we leave, we've got two big events this weekend. We've got a game tonight versus Furman and a game tomorrow versus Harvard. So if Judge Drake and, and, and Diane and President Underwood, if you would step here to the side, I want to officially present the helmet to uh, these wonderful supporters of our athletic department. Thank you.